Hi there, I'm Dan Walleen. I wanted to walk you through a new project that's been released on GitHub. This is actually from Anders Heilsberg and team. It's called Type Chat. Now, if you've worked with AI at all, you'll know that prompt engineering is really, really important. If you don't feed it the proper inputs, you're not going to get out what you want from the different models that you can use. So what Type Chat does is instead of you having to give it a bunch of text, maybe examples of JSON data, things like that, that you want to get back, you can actually define a schema in TypeScript and feed that in. So they like to say, instead of prompt engineering, think of it as schema engineering. It's a lot more precise on the type of data you're going to get back from the models. So I'm going to run you through how you can get started with this project. We're going to start off really quickly with just a run through of the docs. So if you go to this repo and you go through the introduction, you're going to see the standard way we'd interact with something like ChatGPT. We'd give it a prompt. It's rainy in Seattle. Surprise. Got three quick suggestions for what we should do this weekend. Keep it short and direct. And that's pretty standard, right? Now, what you get back really depends on what the model wants to give you because we weren't really specific. In this case, it gave us a numbered list. Now, we can, of course, add structure by doing the same thing, but we could say respond in the form of a bulleted list, be succinct. All right, now we get back a little more specific response type from the model. Of course, you can also come in, though, and say respond in the form of JSON. Now, I've done this a bunch. In fact, I'll give you uh, an example of a tutorial that's out on learn.microsoft.com. And currently, it's not using type chat. It's just embedding JSON samples. And that way, the prompt sends those samples up to the model, and then it can say, oh, OK, you want JSON back. And most of the time, most of the time, you'll get back the JSON. Not always, though, I found. Well you're gonna see it's a little more precise with type chat. And so you might give it this, and then it responds with something like this. And now we can integrate that into our different applications, of course. All right, so that's kind of what we're after, is a little more precise way to do prompt engineering, or as they like to say, schema engineering. Now, what I'm gonna do is run off to GitHub, and this is the repo. And I'm just going to show you a really quick breakdown of what's in here. So most of what you're going to want to do is in examples. And there's a readme right here that will walk you through the examples that are here and then how you can actually configure it. You can also get to this in the type chat docs, by the way. Now, to get started with this, what you can do is you could either clone it uh, or you could do a code space. And that's what I'm actually doing. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to my code space that I already have set up. And you're going to notice there's an examples folder, and that's going to have the examples we're going to run through. Now, there is a readme at the root, but really the one you want is either in the type chat docs or you can come into examples readme. The first thing we're going to do is run npm install, but then we can run this npm run build all command. And what this is going to do is just build all the samples in this workspace. So it'll take just a minute or two, and then you'll be ready to go. Now, the next thing we're going to do is configure a .env file. You can either use OpenAI or you can use Azure OpenAI. In fact, let me just switch to this so it's a little easier to read. And they give an example of what you need to do. So depending on what resource you're currently using, feel free to plug those in. Now, I already have those two values. I'm using Azure OpenAI in my env file. All right, so I've already configured that and it's kind of ready to go. I'll show you an example of what it would look like. Just pick one or the other. Now, from there, we can run the example by running this node dist main.js in one of these sample folders. Now, we're going to use the restaurant. And before I run it, I want to show you a little bit about what's in here. It's not a ton of code, actually. So you'll notice there's a little readme about it. But if we come on into source, there's a schema. So let me go ahead and we'll shrink this down just a tad. And notice that in here we have order, order items, pizza, beer, salad, named pizza, unknown text, very important because the user is now going to use this system to do an order for a restaurant. So what happens if they type something you have no idea about in your model? Well, you have an unknown text type. Here's what pizza allows. We have toppings, size, item type, quantity things like that. 
And then notice we have beer, salad sizes and styles, and then here's what the salad looks like as far as the structure of the type. And that's pretty much it. So you can see we're literally just using TypeScript types to define what we want the model to do. Now, what's gonna happen is with just a little bit of code, we can actually go grab that order schema right here, and then we're gonna create a language model. Now, this is where the ENV uh, keys that we had earlier are gonna be passed in. And then notice we have this create JSON translator of type order. Well, remember there was a type order, and then we're gonna pass in our model, our view schema, and then we're gonna give it a name. What I wanna jump down to is in addition to printing the order, we can do this. We could say translator.translate and request is gonna be what the user types in. And I'll run that just in a second here. And then we're gonna get back the response. Either works or it doesn't, and that's it. Now, if you wanna see what TypeChat is doing, all the code's here. If you come into source, you'll see model, and you'll also see a type chat right here. And what they're actually doing is they're embedding that schema with some details into the prompt. So when you say translator.translate and you pass in the user request, then what that's gonna do is also embed some information about this schema, but it just magically does that for you. You don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is just configure back up top here, uh, like I showed with this create JSON translator. Now, I don't have time to discuss everything, but it also has some schema validation features built in as well. All right, so let me run this and I'll show you what we can do with it. Now, if we CD in then to examples restaurant, I wanna show you one more thing. So they have a set of inputs that you can try out. Let me shrink the left side here. So I'd like two large, uh, one with pepperoni, the other with extra sauce. The pepperoni gets the basil, and you see there's a whole bunch here going on. That's a more complex one. Now we're gonna start kind of at the bottom. I'll take a medium pig with no arugula. Well, if you go back in, there is a, a pig type of pizza you can do, it turns out, that they have configured, but not just that simple. So let's run it and see what happens here. So now we can run node dist main.js, and notice that it gives me this prompt here that I can now use. Now I'm gonna feed it this really simple one here on line 12. And let's see what we get back. Now what this should do is get it and then render that. And that's the print that you saw. I kind of scrolled through that quickly, but one medium pizza with mushrooms, basil, Canadian bacon, because it figured out what pig equated to in some of the uh, information it had. So let's go back into our schema and let's scroll down a little bit. And you're gonna notice there's a Hawaiian Yeti pig in a forest. Okay, close. We didn't type all that and it still figured it out though, which is pretty cool. We were able to get back you know, what we wanted and this is the user-friendly version of the JSON data. In fact, if we want, we can go back into main. We can come on down and here's the order. Let's add a console.log order. And I'm going to go ahead and exit this real quick. We're going to do an npm run build just to rebuild this one example instead of all of them. And now let's run it again. Okay, so let's put back in the same input. And now let's see what we get back here. So notice we get back items, item type pizza, it found pig in a forest, some toppings that were uh, removed and then quantity was one. And then this is what it actually wrote out. Pretty neat. Let's come on back in. Let's grab a, a bigger input here. And let's do, uh, let's do this one. I'll take four large pepperoni pizzas, put extra sauce on two of them, plus an M and J and pale ale. Okay. So let's come on in. We'll paste the input. Again, it's going to take that input, embed the schema, and go ahead and send that up to OpenAI, or Azure OpenAI in my case. Notice we have uh, a pizza, we have an M&J, and we have a pale ale. And then we have a nice summary down here that maybe the restaurant would print out. So what's so cool about this project is you might have heard of in OpenAI a function capability where you can give it a function and say what you'd expect, 
you pass it the parameters, it'll give you back the JSON to call that function. And that's nice if you're using that model. But in this case, we may not be using that model. We might use, you know, Llama 2 or something. And in doing so, we need a way to embed the schema, but do it a little easier. That's what TypeChat does. So check it out. You can head over to uh, the repo here. I'll put a link that you can get to right here at the bottom of the screen. If you're interested in learning more about just general prompt engineering and things like that, if you head over to Microsoft-Cloud on learn.microsoft.com, you can go to this tutorial, Integrate AI, Communication, and Organizational Data. And we'll walk you through a bunch of different ways you can use OpenAI in your applications, talk about the prompt engineering, what you should and shouldn't do. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is not going to use type chat. It literally just came out. But who knows? Maybe I'll switch over to that at some point. But feel free to check that out. But anyway, I'm really excited about this project. I think uh, it offers a lot of promise with using a schema-based engineering approach instead of just prompt engineering. So thanks for listening.